This is a short demonstration of using physics interpolation in Godot 3.5. Uh, this is a scene I've downloaded from Sketchfab and I've created a player represented by this capsule here and I've used the nav mesh system in Godot to create a nav mesh, Baker nav mesh, and I'm using that in order to enable moving this player around. I will show you what it looks like at the moment. So we have a third person camera and we can move the player around at 60 frames a second and 60 ticks per second. And this is typically what you might have been using already for your games. Um, I can show you briefly how I'm using the nav mesh to move the player around, although that isn't the core of this uh, video. Um, my player character is just a spatial with a navigation uh, agent and a mesh instance. Um, on each physics process, it is on each physics tick, it's using the keyboard input to determine a move and then rotating the move according to the yaw that I've decided the camera is facing based on mouse input. I've used that in order to create a target position in world space um, relative to where the player is. Um, and I then set that target location uh, for the navigation agent and use the navigation system to determine whether it can move to that next location. Uh, and if it can, it makes a move in that direction. So I'm really banditing the navigation mesh in order to use that for some simple physics. And what that means is I don't have to create physics reps for all these uh, buildings. So with that done, the uh, interesting part is the camera and in a normal use uh, for a camera, I have this um, super camera, which I will have switched off at the moment as I'm running at 60 ticks per second. And uh, all that does is each physics process, it updates the camera here. It grabs the uh, transform of the parent which is the player and then it uh, adds an offset to it in order to produce a third person camera and the offset is determined by the um, the yaw and the pitch of the camera which are varied as you move the mouse so here it uh, uses the mouse event to vary the yaw and the pitch and it uses those to calculate the direction that the camera should be facing. Um, and then it uses the look out from position to look from that offset position to the position where our player is and that gives us the nice third person camera. So there we have it working nicely at 60 ticks per second. Um, but what we're interested in for physics interpolation is to see what happens when we vary the tick rate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the tick rate from 60 down to 10 and see what happens. So having moved the tick rate down to 10, what we have instead is we have quite a jerky experience where the player only moves uh, 10 times per second on each physics tick and also the camera is only moving um, on each physics tick so we have a jerky camera and a jerky movement so the first step for physics interpolation um, is to ensure that everything is boo moved um, on the physics tick which we've already done here um, and then we turn on physics interpolation in the physics common physics interpolation setting. So let's see what happens when we do that. So this is the very naive version. Um, when we turn that on, our player is now moving pretty smoothly um, and that looks pretty good. Um, now, we also have a smoother camera, even though we're moving at 
seven uh, at ten ticks per second, but there is a little bit of a problem. The because the camera is only updating at ten ticks per second, we're getting an interpolated version, and we're getting some kind of jerky bounces. Um, and there's a bit of lag and not a very responsive camera. Now that might be okay uh, for a lot of you who are using uh, physics interpolation to smooth out games and still running at 60 ticks per second. Um, that'll mean that you can run it on monitors that run at 120 hertz or 133 hertz and it will still look great. Um, but for those of you who are looking to run at a lower tick rate and conserve some CPU, um, this extra step will be interesting to you. So if we look into our camera code, um, I've also set this spool here for using a super duper camera, um, which is going to use manual interpolation for the camera. Let me just first show you what it looks like. Um, this is now using manual interpolation. The camera is much more responsive and the whole experience is much better. There's no uh, jerkiness to the player as you move the camera and there's no lag. So to show you how to do this, um, when I've set the super camera, what is happening is instead of updating it during physics process, we're going to do the interpolation manually and we update the camera during process. Um, now the problem comes that if we update during process, uh, we are only going to normally get the position of the camera that we are um, looking at will only move in a jerky fashion using the old get global transform. But in 3.5, we have a new function available, which we can use specifically for this purpose, which is get global transform interpolated. What that will do is it will give you the um, position of a node in the interpolated position. Um, so we can use that to uh, update the camera every frame and still get a good result. Um, so we're using exactly the same code as we did before. The only difference is we're using this get global transform interpolated function, which gives us this nice result. Now for a um, final illustration, I'll show you what happens if we don't use the global transform interpolated result and we use the process. Okay, as you can see, it doesn't look great. Um, this is because our camera is basing its position on the ticked position of the player rather than the interpolated position, and that's why it looks rubbish. So if you want to move the camera in process, you have to use the get global transform interpolated function. That's pretty much it for the basics of uh, physics interpolation. I will hopefully do some more videos, but this should have uh, piqued your interest. Thanks very much.